the Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. Get our complimentary newsletter at FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. This is the Financial Survival Network. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz on 1590 WPSL. And it's time for another Triple Lutz Report. This is episode 262. It is May 3rd, 2013. Today's show is brought to you by Audible. If you're stuck in traffic, if you're hanging out at the beat, if you're just sitting around your house and you're tired of cruising the internet, tired of watching TV, tired of the radio, maybe even tired of one of my broadcasts, well, I highly recommend you go to Audible. They've got over 100,000 titles. I love the Grisham books. I love Michael Connolly's books, the way they're done. Another guy who's really good, Joseph Finder. More importantly, go to audiblepodcast.com slash Lutz. Audiblepodcast.com slash Lutz. Get one of those books for free. Get a free 30-day membership. You're going to love it. Got to tell you a funny, funny story here. Yours truly, I can be completely, completely gullible. Like, sometimes my own gullibility surprises even me, and I've known myself for 55 years already. So if it surprised me, then I guess who wouldn't be surprised by it? So you know, America's mayor, he's just so much fun. If I was a late-night comedian, I would be kneeling at his altar Because Nanny Bloomberg, he's just a gift that keeps on giving. And the headline on this story by an outfit called the Daily Current, C-U-R-R-A-N-T, which is kind of funny in its own right. I think it's a fruit. Uh, Bloomberg refused second slice of pizza at local restaurant. Says New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg was denied a second slice of pizza today at an Italian eatery in Brooklyn. The owners of the pizzeria refused to serve him more than one piece to protest his proposed soda ban, which would limit double gulp sodas, large gulp, giant gulp sodas. You know about that. We've talked about it a lot. And says he was having an informal lunch with the city controller. That should have been the first tip off. This guy doesn't have informal lunches with his political adversaries. He went, finished his first slice. They were looking over budget documents and he yelled, hey, could I get another pepperoni over here? And the owner supposedly replied, I'm sorry, we can't do that. You've reached your personal slice limit. And Bloomberg supposedly goes, goes ballistic, says, that's not funny because of the soda thing. No, come on. I'm not kidding. I haven't eaten all morning. Just send over another pepperoni. And he says, I'm sorry, sir. We're serious. We've decided that eating more than one piece isn't healthy for you. So we are forbidding you from doing it. Bloomberg goes crazy, starts cursing, I effing skip breakfast just so I could eat four slices. Don't be a blah, blah, blah. And the owner said, sorry, sir, there's nothing we can do. He gets up, he storms out, and supposedly goes to another pizzeria down the street. As it turned out, this is just classic. You would expect Nanny Bloomberg to act and behave exactly this way because he's a hypocrite. He officiates over the Nathan's hot dog eating contest where not only does he eat an unhealthy hot dog, but he encourages some guy to eat 60 hot dogs in 15 minutes. Not exactly very good for the trans fats, not good for the salt level, so many other things. It's just god awful to eat 60 hot dogs in 15 minutes, yet he's out there cheering. So as it turned out, it's a fake. Drudge got taken in, Zero Hedge got taken in, And yours truly got taken in. This is a case of art imitating life where the depiction of this guy is so spot on that you believe without any further examination that it must be true. But let's face it, you know, this is what it's about. This is why you can't trust the Internet. You need to go to those sites. Even when you want to believe, that's especially when it's true. When you want to believe, you need to go do further investigation or you can't take it seriously. You know that we're not a big fan of his, that basically he's this uber nanny who knows better than you, whether it's you should breastfeed instead of using formula, 
whether you should just suffer with your pain rather than taking painkillers, trans fats, salt, secondhand smoke, cigar, bars, you name it. This guy has his thumb in everything. And I've been complaining quite a while about these bike lanes that they've got in New York City that nobody uses them, but they've erected barriers. It makes it much more dangerous to cross the street. And it's greatly increased traffic and cut down on the number of parking spaces. Well, up next, I'm going to tell you about the next step in this lunacy. And first, as you know, Audible's new sponsor of the Financial Survival Network. You know that I'm a huge, huge Audible fan. Been listening to Audible books, audio books, download MP3s for, God, five, six years, maybe longer than that. I've listened to hundreds of books. I just recently got done on a course about nanotechnology. I didn't understand much about it, but I understood enough to know that this thing is revolutionary and it's going to change everything. I only wish I was younger. I could go back to school, major in nanotechnology, and then have uh, the industrial world fight over me. And if you're thinking of going to school, think about nanotechnology. It's going to rule. You're going to see it everywhere. It's already coming up in medicine, in minerals manufacturing, in, in 3D printing, you name it. Go to audiblepodcast.com slash Lutz, L-U-T-Z, free one month subscription, free book. And what am I reading right now? I've gotten into this Lee Child series of books, the Jack Reacher books. Recently, there was a movie with Tom Cruise where he played Jack Reacher. The only difference is that in the book, Jack Reacher is six foot five, weighs 250 pounds, and is a complete solid wall of muscle. Not exactly Tom Cruise type material. Once you get past that, like I just put Tom Cruise out of my mind. He never was Jack Reacher. Series of books is great. The guy uh, is out there saving the free world every single day. You really should go take a look. Like, like I said, audiblepodcast.com slash Lutz. Free book, free one month subscription. Check it out now. So Nanny Bloomberg's his next act of genius, installation of bike share docking stations. And New Yorkers hate them. And why do they hate them? Well, a dock share station, basically you share bikes, I guess. There's these companies, you rent them, you stick in your credit card or barcode, whatever you do. And they're putting up these bike share docking stations all over the city. And they're eliminating loading zones. They're eliminating parking spaces. They're putting in 330 docking stations in Brooklyn alone there's going to be 6,000 share bikes. Now that's great, but put them in a place where they're going to be out of the way, where they're not going to hinder commerce. That's not the way New York City does it. They just put them wherever they feel like it without any concern or consideration for the drivers of New York City who pay a disproportionate share of the taxes, billions of dollars in tolls, registration fees, sales taxes, you name it. Drivers in New York have been getting screwed over for three generations now since the car was invented, but certainly, especially since World War II. They're being graffitiized, these things. They're being damaged. A truck hit one, and I don't know if it was deliberate or not, but this just isn't right. And they're also getting rid of bike racks where people who ride their own bikes into the city can lock up their bikes at a bike rack. Well, no more of that because the city's getting paid money for the docking stations. They're getting a cut of the profit. They want the money. They don't care about you. The city says, well, Quinnipiac says 72% of residents support the bike sharing concept. Well, that might be all well and good, but I guarantee you that 98% of those residents will never use a bike share. And all they do is take up valuable real estate in a city whose real estate is among the highest priced in the world, and they don't accomplish their goal. Now, Nanny wants you to lose weight, and he thinks that if you ride bikes, it's going to help you lose weight. And I can tell you it does. I ride bikes regularly in Florida where everything's flat, perfectly manicured highways, sidewalks. It's really a wonderful experience. But look, certain things just aren't meant to work everywhere. 
And this bike share concept, maybe it works great in Europe, but if you have to lose parking spaces, and they've already taken thousands of them for these stupid bike lanes and stupid bus lanes, they've made it more impossible. They've made New York City less livable. They're driving up costs of private parking garages. And that's another thing. At private parking garages in New York City, they get 18 and three quarters percent sales tax for you to park your car. It could cost you $100 if you're parking in the plaza or more. Uh, Some of these garages charge $1,000 a month, which is more rent than a lot of people in the world pay on their apartments. So, Nanny, get out of the way. Why don't you retire early? Okay, maybe you didn't uh, tell the guy, give the guy the bird for refusing to give you another slice of pie, but you're just a bad guy. You've turned into a really bad guy. Please get out of office. Stop coming after people's guns. Mind your own damn business. Go back to running your company. Seem to have done a pretty good job on that. And just leave us all the hell alone. That's all we ask. This is Kerry Lutz. Been another Triple Lutz Report, signing off.